Chapter 23 Frank Frank missed his bow. He wanted to stand on the porch and shoot the snakes from a distance. A few well-placed exploding arrows, a few craters in the hillside. Problem solved. Unfortunately, a quiver full of arrows wouldn't do Frank much good if he couldn't shoot them. Besides, he had no idea where the basilisks were. They'd stopped blowing fire as soon as he came outside. He stepped off the porch and leveled his golden speared. He didn't like fighting up close. He was too slow and bulky. He'd done okay during the war games, but this was real. There were no giant eagles ready to snatch him up and take him to the medics if he made a mistake. You can be anything, his mother's voice echoed in his mind. Great, he thought. I want to be good with a spear and immune to poison and fire. Something told Frank his wish had not been granted. The spear just felt awkward in his hands. Patches of flame still smoldered on the hillside, the acrid smoke burning in Frank's nose. The withered grass crunched under his feet. He thought about the stories his mother used to tell, generations of heroes who had battled Hercules, fought dragons, and sailed monster-infested seas. Frank didn't understand how he could have evolved from a line like that, or how his family had migrated from Greece through the Roman Empire all the way to China, but some unsettling ideas were starting to form. For the first time, he started to wonder about this Prince of Pylos and his great-grandfather Shen, Shen Lun's disgrace at Cam Jupiter and what the family powers might be. The gift has never kept our family safe, grandmother had warned. A reassuring thought as Frank hunted poisonous fire-breathing devil snakes. The night was quiet except for the crackle of brush fires. Every time a breeze made the grass rustle, Frank thought about the grain spirits who'd captured Hazel. Hopefully they'd gone south with the giant polybides. Frank didn't need any more problems right now. He crept downhill, his eyes stinging from the smoke. Then, about 20 feet ahead, he saw a burst of flame. He'd considered throwing his spear. Stupid idea. Then he'd be without a weapon. Instead, he advanced toward the fire. He wished he had the Gorgon's blood vials, but they were at the back of the boat. He wondered if Gorgon blood could cure basilisk poison. But even if he had the vials and managed to choose the right one, he doubted he'd have time to take it before he crumbled the dust like his bow. He emerged in a clearing of burned grass and found himself face to face with the basilisk. The snake rose up on its tail. It hissed and expanded the collar of white spikes around its neck. Little Prown, Frank remembered. That's what basilisk meant. He thought basilisks were huge, dragon-like monsters that could petrify you with your eyes. Somehow, the real basilisk was even more terrible. As tiny as it was, this extra small package of fire, poison, and evil would be much harder to kill than a large, bulky lizard. Frank had seen how fast it could move. The monster fixed its pale yellow eyes on Frank. Why wasn't it attacking? Frank's golden spear felt cold and heavy. The dragon tooth point dipped toward the ground all on its own, like a dousing rod searching for water. Stop that! Frank struggled to lift the spear. He'd have enough trouble jabbing the monster without his spear fighting against him. Then he heard the grass rustle on either side of him. The other two basilisks slithered into the clearing. Frank had walked straight into an ambush.